James Shaw, question number 11. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> to the, I'm sorry, speak up. Order. Speak up. Order. Order. I require less interjection from my right. James Shaw, question number 11. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister for Climate Change Issues, does he stand by the Prime Minister's statement that, quote, New Zealand can hold its head up high when it comes to climate change, end quote? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Tim Grosser. Uh, yes, because no other country in the world has established an international research institution devoted solely to trying to find real solutions to 14 per cent of global emissions. I'm referring, of course, to the Global Research Alliance on Agriculture Emissions. Because when the member joins me and other New Zealanders in Paris, and we're looking forward to that occasion, if there is a deal of our new comprehensive agreement, it is highly likely he will discover to be based on the New Zealand proposal proposal on legal form, because he will also be invited to a special event in Paris where we are hosting people celebrating the huge political success we're having in combating the $500 billion of wasteful subsidies on fossil fuel subsidies, and because we spent $100 million helping South Pacific countries convert from diesel to renewable. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Uh, when he has saved the planet, how high will the gold statue be to himself? No, that, that question's not in order. Supplementary question, supplementary question, David. Supplementary question, David Seymour. Why has the government ceased to allow the redemption of international units to fulfil New Zealand obligations? And what has that done to the cost of emissions for New Zealanders vis-à-vis -vis those uh, in other countries, such as those where international units can be redeemed to fulfil such obligations? The Honourable Mr. Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, we did this because international carbon prices collapsed. The members well aware of the history of this, and it was designed to give a better signal to New Zealand emitters to get on the path towards a lower emissions economy. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Given that strong action to prevent climate change means we'll have to stop burning fossil fuels in the foreseeable future, what advice has he given to the Minister of Finance about protecting people's pensions against the risk of stranded assets in fossil fuel companies? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, I have given no advice because the Minister of Finance does not need advice. But our parties and government's position on this is crystal clear. We have a number of public agencies which have investment charters. They are expected to follow and do follow responsible code of conducts, very closely aligned to the United Nations principles on this, and we do not interfere with their decision-making process. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. So is he then saying that as the Minister for Climate Change Issues, he bears no responsibility for policies to rein in the causes of climate change? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that if Mr English were to um, ask my advice, I would give it. But I don't bother giving Mr English advice on matters where he seeks no advice because he doesn't need it. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. So has he seen the Business New Zealand survey results released yesterday? I'm sorry? Order. Has he seen the Business New Zealand results survey released yesterday that showed that businesses want to see cross-party agreement on policies to address climate change? And if so, why does his government keep opposing the practical policies that the Green Party brings to the table? Mr Speaker. Order. Order. The Honourable Tim Grosser. Yes, I have seen uh, that report. I read it yesterday, in fact. And I took it to be, perhaps this is a little unkind on my part, to be a very veiled criticism by the Business New Zealand of the Green Party for trying to jettison the cross-party support we have that the emissions trading scheme, not a carbon tax, should be the main vehicle. Order. Point of order, Richard Prosser. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, pursuant to Standing Order 4.1 um, and Speaker's Ruling 1 bar 2 um, and recognising the limitations of Speaker's Ruling 1 bar 5, I seek to move that the House, being the master of its own affairs, request rather than require of the Prime Minister that he withdraw comments which other members have taken order. offence to. Can the member please repeat the standing, the standing order he's referring to? Uh, standing Order 4.1 uh, and Speaker's 41. Oh, Speaker's ruling, yes, not standing, uh, stand, standing order. Standing order for one. Speaker's ruling one bar two, and Speaker's ruling one bar five. 
I'm going to ask the member, it's very confusing to understand what he's doing. Can the member just state it again clearly? I'll consider whether it's in order to put the leave and then I would put the leave if it's in order to do so. Yeah. Order. <coughs> Yeah, Mr. Speaker, in, in, your, in your response to my colleague Dennis O'Rourke earlier, um, order, can that, we just that his we request just have was, was outside standing orders? Order. Um, I'll help the order. I'm going to help the member. Can the member just repeat what he said earlier, slowly and clearly, so we can all look at our references? If the see... leave is in order, I will then put the leave. If it's not, I won't. If the leave is in order, I'll put the leave and it's over to the House. Mr. Speaker, so, I seek to move that the House, being the master of its own affairs, request rather than require of the Prime Minister that he withdraw comments made, yes, uh, made yesterday to which members took offence. Order. Order. I'm going to put the leave. I think it'll be dealt with. Uh, leave a sort to, uh, to take that course of action. Is there any objection? Yes. Question number 12.